Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Christmas. September of 2012, Brewers Buckos this evening on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Hi, everybody. We welcome you. Brian Anderson, Bill Schroeder, Sophia Menardi is our reporter. Great to have you with us tonight. And now let's see if the Brewers can cap this thing off. They've been going along very well on this road trip, had a chance at a sweep in Minnesota Rock, and they have a chance at a sweep here in Pittsburgh. And it has been all about the pitching. Yeah, maybe it's the big ballparks that have been featured on this road trip because the Brewers pitching staff has been very aggressive in the strike zone, not afraid to use the fastball, the starting rotation, the bullpen, outstanding. They've only allowed 18 runs on this road trip, and seven of those came in a loss in St. Louis. They've only allowed one run in the last 24 innings, and the bullpen since the beginning of June has been the best in all of baseball. So what that means is when you get good pitching, you have a pretty good chance of winning ball games. That's what the Brewers have done on this road trip. How about 39 and two-thirds innings and only two earned runs allowed by the bullpen? Frankie Rodriguez is perfect as the closer this year. Kyle Loach gets the ball here tonight. He'll be taking on the Pirates. Has 11 career wins against them. The most for any opponent he's ever faced. Brewers Bucks. It's coming up next on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Baseball tonight on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. 
beautiful night here, Wednesday night. And the Brewers excited to be returning home after this one. Charlie Morton and the Pirates hit the field at PNC Park, 84 degrees. And after that long, long game on Monday with all of the rain and the two hours of rain delays, we've had two excellent nights for baseball. Craig Council and the Brew Crew trying to make this a winning road trip. They've secured that already on this nine gamer trying to go six and three on this current nine game road trip before they return home to face the Nationals. Potawatomi batting order is Gene Segura, Jonathan Lucroy, then Ryan Braun, Adam Lind, Aramis Ramirez and Gerardo Parra in the middle with Hector Gomez, Shane Peterson and Kyle Loesch rounding it out. No Carlos Gomez in the lineup tonight. Craig Council saying he wants to give him a day of rest will be available to pinch hit. Ready to go. Charlie Morton deals his first offering. It is down and in and we're playing ball in Pittsburgh tonight. Delighted to have you with us. You see the numbers for Charlie Morton. Rocky made three rehab starts returning from right hip surgery last year, last September after the season or his season ended. And he's made three major league starts this season. And he's won them all his last time out against the Atlanta Braves. Three earned runs in five innings. Was not able to pitch very deep in that ball game. First two starts for Morton went seven innings each. Has struggled against the Brewers in 11 starts. He's two and six. And Segura takes one inside. Segura coming in with a 287 batting average. Has three home runs, 16 runs batted in. And he hits that one high in the air to right. That's going to stay in the ballpark. Polanco makes the play and that's how the night begins here for Charlie Morton. One away just underway. Let's check in with Sophia. What do you have on an update for Carlos Gomez Sophia. Yeah Craig Hansel saying it was just a day off for him saying he's been dealing with some sore legs after playing so many games in a row particularly a sore right groin. So he said he's considered day to day but like you said available to pinch hit possibly tonight. All right Sophia thank you. And here is Jonathan Lucroy misses way inside does Morton. Lucroy got some great news. His uh, brother David was a 20th round selection by the Brewers. Well, wouldn't that be something if those two could end up as a battery one day in the big leagues. Yeah, that hasn't happened all that often. It's all in the family, good athletes, right? Now, Lucroy, a third round selection in 07. David went in the 20th round. Lucroy takes one down and away. Three balls, no strikes. Charlie Morton, a guy that doesn't walk too many. He's only walked four in 19 innings of work. He relies on a good sinking fastball and a pretty good curveball. He's got a very good hook and misses with that pitch. And Lucroy draws a walk. One of the few that you're going to see out of Charlie Morton. Well, let's check out the Pirates as they line up defensively. Brought to you by Menards tonight. You got Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco. A lot of speed in that outfield. You need it. It's a big ballpark. Gun Mercer, Walker, and Alvarez from third to first, and Francisco Cervelli behind home plate. Yeah, noticeably absent from the Pirates lineup tonight is Josh Harrison. He has struggled this year after his All Star campaign last season. And Hurdle gives him the night off. Another bat that will be available off the bench. Here's Ryan Braun. Morton deals strike one. Now the Brewers have had some great success on this road trip. A lot of low scoring games. They beat the Cardinals one to nothing, beat the Pirates two to nothing here on Monday. And then the Brewers winning four to one in last night's game, taking the first two of this series as Braun fouls it back. Taylor Youngman, what a story he was last night, making his major league debut. He went seven innings. And in his first game in the big leagues, he got a win. And then the guy next to him, not too bad in the first game on Monday. Jimmy Nelson, six scoreless innings. 
Taylor Youngman is going to join us during the broadcast tonight. No balls, two strikes on Braun. Runner at first, that's Luke Croy. And Braun takes one low. That's that sinking fastball that Morton relies on. Not a big strikeout guy. And when he's right, gets a lot of ground ball outs at two seam fastball. Ryan on the road trip is six for 23. Does have a homer. A couple of RBIs. Missed two games on this road trip. He went back to Los Angeles for a little treatment on his thumb. That nerve injury that continues to crop up. They call it cryotherapy. And had a cryotherapy injection to try to calm that nerve down and freeze it for the moment. Bronze hoping that's going to take him to the end of the regular season. Two balls, two strikes. Now Braun hit his home run on this road trip in Minnesota. Had a key RBI here on Monday night. Had a late add on run for the Brewers in that rainy mess Monday night, but a Brewer two to nothing victory. Except for scoring 10 runs in a game in Minnesota, the offense really hasn't been you know, that great, but the pitching has been even better. I mean, the pitching has been outstanding. They haven't needed a lot of runs, and, and that's what it takes. You get good pitching, you have a chance to win no matter you know, what the other team's doing. They're getting a couple of deep starts by Jimmy Nelson and Taylor Youngman the last two days. And, you know, think about this the Brewers are playing shorthanded. Will Smith is still serving his suspension. It ends tonight. Originally an eight game suspension and it is. Now at six games he'll be back active tomorrow. There's a swing and a miss and Braun is down on strikes. That big sweeping curveball from Charlie Morton. It's a good pitch for him. He uses it a lot when he's ahead in the count. Not sure you call it a curveball or a slider. It's kind of a hybrid. It goes across with big break. And Braun swings at one out of the zone. So two outs for Adam Lynn. Not in the starting lineup yesterday with Francisco Liriano starting for the Pirates. Lind and Jason Rogers have been platooning at first base. The Brewers haven't faced a whole lot of left handed starters recently. Rogers had a terrific night last night. Drove in a couple of runs. He hit a home run. And he and Lind both contributing in a big way offensively, combining for 11 home runs now and over 40 runs batted in. Here's a strike. Yeah, this is only the 13th game started by a left handed pitcher against Milwaukee, and they're 6 and 6. They're at 500 against lefties. Beat one last night. And he goes, according to the home plate umpire, Field and Colbreth. Unable to check his swing. Lynn not happy about that call. Hitters don't like when home plate umpires make swing or no swing calls from behind the plate. They'd rather they ask for help. And that's the only thing Lynn is upset about. Just get some help from third base. And Lynn strikes out. So Charlie Morton with back to back K's works around a walk to Luke Croy, and we're headed for the bottom of the first. Kyle Loesch on the mound in Pittsburgh tonight.
Hi, Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Buy Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers. It's Miller time. And it's game time here in Pittsburgh. Clint Hurdle and the Pirates. They came into this series red hot. They had only lost once in the month of June. Had a great May. But the Brewers have cooled them off. Back to back wins for the Brew Crew against Hurdle's Pirates. Kyle Loesch ready to fire. First batter up is Gregory Polanco. He's in the leadoff spot tonight. Harrison occupied that position last night. And these are numbers that Kyle Loesch would like to get off the screen as fast as possible. It has been a very poor season for Kyle Loesch. Well, maybe facing the Pittsburgh Pirates is just what he needs. He's made 24 starts and he's 11 and 5. He's had good success against Pittsburgh. His last win came at New York in mid May. He's due. Polanco swings and drills one to right. Going back on it is Braun. That is off the wall. And Polanco into second with a double. Just reached down and served one off the fence and right. Strong young man. One hands it. Not real deep out there, but it is a big high wall. 21 feet. Give you the rest of the Pirates, courtesy of Potawatomi. Marte follows Polanco, and then Andrew McCutcheon. He's got big numbers against Kyle Loesch in his career. Neil Walker, Jung Ho Gung, Pedro Alvarez in the middle, and then it's Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, and Charlie Morton rounding out Clint Hurdle's starting nine. And a leadoff double puts a Pirate in scoring position for Starling Marte. Brewers pitching has held the Pirates to just one run in 18 innings in this series. And it's been the youngsters getting it done. Jimmy Nelson and Taylor Youngman yesterday. Very impressive. One thing the Brewers have been doing on this road trip, as we talked about when we came on the air, very aggressive in the strike zone with the fastball. Marte drops a bunt down foul. Pitching inside effectively. Might have something to do with the three ballparks that they've played in on this road trip. Big ballparks, you can make some mistakes and get away with them. Can't do that at Miller Park. The Brew Crew dropped two out of three in St. Louis after winning the first game of this road trip and the first game of that series, one to nothing. And then took two out of three from the Twins. They won the first two at Target Field, another big ballpark. And they have won the first two here in Pittsburgh. Five and three thus far on this nine gamer across ten days. Runner goes. Lucroy's throw. Not in time. Polanco taking a risk. He ends up at third base. Yeah, better throw. The Brewers might have a chance at an out. Yeah, Luke off balance when he got to the baseball, just couldn't get enough on it. Good play by Ramirez to keep it in the infield. Kind of squirts away. Look at Lucroy. He's a little bit off balance when he makes the throw. Throws it off his back foot. That ball sailed on him and Ramirez has to come off the bag to keep Polanco with third base. He is there with nobody out. Marte grounds one toward third. Ramirez gloves and throws to first not in time. That'll be an infield hit at an RBI. And the Pirates get it churning here early against Kyle Loesch. Infield hit RBI Marte flying down the line. Well, a little bit different for Lowe's this start as opposed to the one in Minnesota. He was awesome in his first four innings. Then gave up a five run fifth. There's a little roller down the third baseline. Marte with great speed, and Ramirez, not much you could do with that one. Ball stays fair. Polanco scores, and Marte, a threat to steal on first base. Marte continues to drive in the runs. He now has 41 runs batted in. That's good enough. To put him inside the top five in the National League. And he is showing all of his game here in this series. He hit a home run last night. Great power, great speed. He's got a strong throwing arm. Pirates feel like they're pretty well set in their outfield for many years with 
Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco. Yeah, a lot of speed out there, and they need it in this big ballpark, particularly in the gaps. Hurdle's anchor is his center fielder, a gold glover, a former MVP, Andrew McCutcheon. There goes Marte and a swing and a miss. Lucroy's throw is late. A stolen base for Marte. Brewers pitching has kept the Pirates underwater the first two games, but they are coming out aggressive here today. Yeah, taking an extra base on a wild pitch and now a steal of second. Lucroy's throw pretty good, but a big jump by Marte. One ball, one strike on McCutcheon. McCutcheon was one out of four last night. But he hit a couple of rockets in last night's game for outs. Hit one to deep center field late in the game in the eighth inning. And at the time, the Brewers had just a two run lead, and there was a man on. When it left the bat, it looked like a tie game. Stayed in the ballpark. Gomez made the catch at the fence. And then uh, earlier, Parra made a nice running catch in the left center field gap. Take extra bases away from McCutcheon. And maybe the play of the night, Carlos Gomez on a diving catch. Took a hit away from McCutcheon earlier in the series as well. Brewers have played very good defense. Specifically, Segura and Gomez. McCutcheon lines one through a base hit. Marte around third. He's going to try to score. Here comes the throw. It's a good one. The tag is in time. Out at the plate. What a throw from left field by Shane Peterson. Yep, right on the money. One hopper, an easy one to handle for Lucroy. And stunning that the Pirates would send it with nobody out. Never make the first out at home plate. I mean, that's the cardinal rule. Good base running though by Marte. On the line drive, wasn't sure it was going to be caught. And for whatever reason, he was waved around and he was out easily at home. Well, the Brewers needed that. Peterson put it right on the money. Easy for Lucroy to make a catch and a tag. So the first out comes at home plate. That's going to be a single for McCutcheon. He advances to second on the throw. And here is Neil Walker. Walker was hitless in last night's game. Had three hits in the opener. Big swing and a miss from him. Walker is a 308 hitter against Kyle Loesch in his career. He's got a pretty good sample size as well. He's 12 for 39. Does have a home run. Well, change up misses. Nine strikeouts, however, for Kyle Loesch. Part of those 39 at bats. Yeah, Youngman had some success with him with change-ups and curveballs last night. Very good fastball hitter. That Is one's it? on the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, good two-seamer by Loesch. It's all about location for Kyle. He hasn't had very good location at times. And that's when he gets hit hard. Getting too much of the plate. Two balls, two strikes. McCutcheon at second. Count goes full. Well, for Kyle Lois, as easy as it has appeared over the last four years for him, his earned run average during that stretch is 3.58. Last couple of years in St. Louis, first two years in Milwaukee. It's anything but right now. Ground ball back to the mound. Lois has got McCutcheon in a pickle. He'll run right at him. Boy, McCutcheon. That's some kind of effort there to be able to allow Walker to go to second base. Yeah. He put a juke on Kyle Loesch. Daniel Barry Sanders and made uh, Loesch kind of dig them pretty badly and he was able to 
get the job done. Once you get in a pickle like that, your job is to stay in a rundown long enough for the base runner to advance. He did that. Walker standing at second base. Watch this move right here. It's Barry Sanders right here. Right there you go. Gone. And once McCutcheon realizes the Walker is at second, he just stops. It's not hard to imagine Andrew McCutcheon as a, as a running back in the NFL. <laughs> great speed, great quickness. I think he chose the right sport, though. Well, he had a bad base running move to start it, but he ended up making a good one to allow Walker to second base. So it's a push, right? Maybe he lacked a little bit of speed with Walker there as opposed to McCutcheon. There's Jung Ho Gung now with. Walker out at second base and a first pitch fastball strike from Los. The Korean sensation Jung Ho Gung. Hitless in the series. He got a start here on Monday night. Started at third base. In that game, Gung played third. Harrison played right field. Clint Hurdle's trying to find some playing time for Gung. Problem is, he's got an excellent defensive shortstop in Jordy Mercer. Shortstop is Gung's natural position where he's played his entire professional career. Right to Ramirez. And that will retire the side. So three hits to start the game offensively for the Pirates, but they get just one run. Game throwing out Starling Marte, one nothing Pirates. Brewers baseball presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. And the Pirates take the lead here with a run in the first on an RBI from Marte. Charlie Morton back to work. Aramis Ramirez will lead things off, followed by Para, then Hector Gomez. Brewers winning back to back series for the first time this year. Had a chance at a sweep in Minnesota. They have a chance at a sweep here tonight. Brewers have not had a sweep this season. Got to go back to August of last year to find the last sweep. That was in Los Angeles, a three game sweep in August of 2014. I remember that one. Well, Aramis Ramirez. Had a key moment in the game last night. Tight game, well pitched game, and Ramirez goes deep. Power ball, home run number seven. A no and, doubter. And hammer that one off of Jared Hughes, a hanging slider.
the former pirate Aramis Ramirez. And that is just foul, just missed the bag. I would imagine, and uh, who knows if Aramis will even be with the Brewers come September, but the last trip to Pittsburgh is uh, towards the end of the season. This is the second trip here already, but September 10th through September 13th is the last series in Pittsburgh. And for Ramirez, if uh, he's still a member of the Brewers, I would imagine a little bit sentimental as he's winding his career down. All began here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Aramis grounds out to start the inning for Morton. Live here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Aramis was 19 years of age when he was called up to the big leagues. So one away. And that'll bring up Gerardo Parra. Para gets a start in center field tonight. No Carlos Gomez in the lineup for the Brewers. Sophia reporting that Gomez is just getting a rest. Legs are a little banged up. But he'll be ready in a pinch if the Brewers need him a little later. Yeah, misses energy just not even being in the lineup. Para right off the end of the bat, little soft liner to Neil Walker for the second out. Yeah, Park glad to see a right hander on the mound. He had a rough night last night against Francisco Liriano. The only lefty in a Brewers starting lineup. Hey, this summer, every Friday is a free t shirt Friday. All fans at Miller Park. Uh, this Friday, as the Brewers take on the Nationals, we'll get a free Brewers retro t shirt courtesy of Hupie and Abraham. Call 414 902 4000. Visit Brewers.com for tickets. Nationals are probably in Milwaukee already. Yeah, they played in New York today. The Yankees. Not the Mets. That would be the Giants playing the Mets. Had the no hitter last night from Chris Heston. But they played a day game at Yankee Stadium today. The Washington Nationals. It's going to start a four game series tomorrow. Against the Nats. And the Brewers are going to see. Some of the best pitching in the National League. Joe Gonzalez started today for Washington. Nationals ended up winning that game in extra innings. They played 11. As a called strike, Hector Gomez is out a quick one, two, three inning. We'll visit with Taylor Youngman when we come back. He'll join us from the dugout after this. And Kyle Loesch back on the mound, and we are pleased to be joined by Taylor Youngman, 
taking his uh, life in his own hands here in the dugout, and he's uh, <laughs> already at it. You're going to test your concentration skills right here, Taylor, so we appreciate that. I've got this. That's good. You're focused, just yeah. like last night. That was a, a very impressive effort, and, you know, from up here, you look extremely poised as Alvarez turns around the first pitch, and that is way, way gone. Yikes. That's going to head into the Allegheny. Pedro Alvarez with a home run. Yeah, and you don't quickly see, two to nothing. You don't see many hit like that. That went over everything. Wow. Big power for Pedro Alvarez. And that no cheap me there. Big boys hit him there. First pitch of the inning from Los. And it's two to nothing. Number 10 for Alvarez. And before we can even get into our interview with Taylor Youngman, activity here. All right, let's uh, let's take a mulligan and restart this with Taylor as Francisco Cervelli steps in. Okay, so from up here, Taylor, looked like you were in complete control. I thought it was interesting. You said last night after the first batter, you were able to settle down a little bit. Yeah, you know the first batter was big for me. Uh, you know, coming out of the pen, I was a little anxious. Uh, like I was telling guys last night. Getting that first batter is the biggest thing for me, trying to relax and settle in a little bit. Always good to have that uh, first inning in the big leagues, three up, three down. And another reason for you to be pretty relaxed. Did you feel like you had your good stuff last night? I mean, you, you know, your numbers down in the minor leagues, you had some good starts at the end, but it uh, looks like you had all your pitches working for you last night. Yeah, you know, I, I struggled a little bit with the breaking ball. Uh, I thought I. I spotted well with the with the fastball, you know, the sinker and the the four seam. Uh, I threw some good changeups. Uh, really, the most frustrating thing for me was the breaking ball. Um, but like I said, you know, being able to spot the fastball was huge for me. <laughs> Getting a little drink. What, can you tell us uh, what was more difficult, facing the Pirates last night or doing this interview under these conditions? I mean, this is tough to concentrate. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You're doing a great sure. job, though, man. Yeah. I'm very impressed. And it's, taking his eyes off the camera. Segura makes the play for the first out. Uh, your family was here. Uh, your little nephew was a star last night. Hudson, how old is that kid? And how did you get him a uniform so fast? That's that's what I heard. He's three years old. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, uh, he's three years old, and uh, I believe my sister actually made that uniform. I could be wrong. Wow. Yeah, she's uh, she's pretty creative. We just got a great shot of your family uh, back at the ballpark tonight. You know, I know, I know you were in game mode and you're doing your thing, but uh, for the families, it, it must have been very nerve wracking for them watching you make your major league debut. What were some of the discussions today with your folks from Texas? Uh, you know they. They were probably more nervous than I was yesterday. Uh, I know they were just as excited as me. <laughs> um, you know, just just hearing from all my, my family and friends back home, just knowing I had that support from those guys, you know, it's great to hear from all those people. Um, it was I was glad to have my family and friends here. Uh, you know, just having everybody, you know, support me and, and having them there for me is great. Taylor, how much of a, an impact would, did the ballpark here in Pittsburgh have on you being aggressive in the count? I mean, you pitched in a ballpark that it just lights out on me for hitters. I mean, does that affect the way you pitch? I, I try not to take that too much into consideration. Um, you know, I, I just go out there and throw my game, uh, stick to my strengths. Uh, you know, you try not to think about stuff like that. When you start changing things for the ballpark or whatever hitters in the box, I think it's, uh, it's bad for you. I think it, it affects you in a negative way. Taylor, we're looking at a video of you from last night, and uh, your delivery is interesting. And... A lot of the Pirates, and we commented uh, on the air last night, but it's very similar to a Jared Weaver, that crossfire action. Talk us through that, the mechanics of that, and some of the things that you have to do to make sure you keep in your proper mechanics with a, a bit of an unorthodox move to home plate. Uh, you know, I've heard the comparisons. Um, you know, for me, I've always been across my body. I've actually been, you know, further across my body, uh, you know, in high school and college. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, I, now I moved, I think, in, in uh, college and pro ball the first few years. I was on the first base side of the rubber. Uh, we made the adjustment last year to go to the third base side of the rubber. Uh, it's created a little bit more deception. I mean, there was already some deception there. And then uh, moving to the third base side just made it, uh, you know, that, <laughs> that much better. So, uh, 
Yeah, so I had, uh, you know, it's worked out well for me. And, uh, you know, I've been sticking with it and just trying to, to get through my pitches. And uh, you can take that off. I can't, you know, I can't okay, concentrate you can take it off. You can take it off. I mean, I, I was trying as hard as I could right there. Too. Yeah. I'm very impressed. You've, you've done a heck of a job. Yes, I mean, sir. most guys just give up. We're going yeah. to let you out of the, the firing line, and uh, you'll remember that uh, the next time. But this is a pretty common practice, especially <clears> when Matt Gars is not on the mound and he's in the dugout. He had a nice little uh, antler ears for you yesterday. He's a jokester. He's a jokester. <laughs> <laughs> that thing went viral. If you haven't seen the tweet on the, the Brewers' uh, Twitter page. Uh, just one last question here before we let you go, but... Tell us what it was like. How much reaction did you get? How many people are calling you, texting you? Uh, what was it like for you after the game and throughout the day today? And it was great yesterday. Uh, before the game, I was getting a lot of good lucks and congratulations on the call up. Uh, after the game, you know, I got double the text. I got congratulations on the win and things like that. So, I mean, I, I had 150, 200 texts from different friends and family and things like that. So, I mean, it's like I said earlier, it's just great to have the support from everybody I know. And, you know, it was fun. First rounder in 2011, and you have arrived here in 2015. Congratulations on the start. We'll see you again on Sunday. You're going to get a matchup with Max Scherzer. Perfect. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, Taylor. Appreciate that. That's impressive he was able to bear down through all that. And you knew it was coming. He's a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> the characters that are down in the I guess, I guess they just have to do that, and making it a little bit more difficult on Taylor to get the interview done. But uh, <laughs> I guess all in good fun. Well, it's good to see the Brewers having some fun again, right? After a very rough start to the season, things starting to go a little better. And now yeah, Matt Garza, during the well, first of all, Taylor, when he walked into the clubhouse uh, yesterday, he was doused with all kinds of uh, whatever that was mm -hmm. sodas. Water, Gatorades, whatever they had available to him. He got totally drenched in the clubhouse. And loved every minute of it. And check out Matt Garza here. <laughs> this is great. He's doing his interview. He's very serious. And uh, Garza just, you know, he just doesn't get enough TV time, Matt Garza. So the antler ears went viral today. Well done. Matt Garza coming off a win against the Minnesota Twins. He's feeling spry once again. He'll be back up tomorrow night. Garza will have Tanner Roark, Roark of the Nationals. He'll uh, get that four game series started. There's a swing and a miss by Polanco. Los giving up a long homer to start this inning. 438 feet they measured it. Yeah, that's been one of the issues for Kyle this year, giving up homers. That's the 15th that he's allowed this year. Full count to Polanco. In the air to right, playable for Braun. He came in, now going back. And he's got it for the out. Side is retired. The Pirates have scored runs in each of the first two innings. Our thanks to Taylor Youngman. Excellent concentration during that interview.
EP and help us decide which Fox Sports supports partner will be crowned the winner. The charity with the most votes at the end of this Brewer season will score big with a donation from Hupi and Abraham. Choose from American Heart Association of Wisconsin, Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee, or Fisher House, Wisconsin. High fly ball wow. run down by Andrew McCutcheon. Yeah, he's something that guy. Man, what a play. McCutcheon runs it down, takes an extra base hit away from Peterson. Yeah, sore knee at all. I mean, he's playing a little bit deeper because of the sore knee, but uh, he's able to track it. He gets a good jump, angles back, and gets it into webbing in front of the warning track. That's a heck of a play. Take it away, extra bases. A former gold glove. Center fielder. Juan Lagares won the gold glove last year of the New York Mets. It was McCutcheon in 13 and then uh, Carlos Gomez the year before that. Two of the last three gold glove award winners in center field in the ballpark tonight. Loesch with one out. Kyle's been getting some at bats in non pitching roles here recently. Got an at bat in that 17 inning game. He uh, actually pinched at a pinch run appearance earlier on this road trip. Yep. He's a versatile guy. Yep. Drove in a run as a pinch hitter. Actually didn't drive in a run. Grounded into a double play, but a run scored. In Atlanta, so he's had a couple of pinch hit opportunities. He's made contact both times. He'd gladly trade all that for a couple of wins. He needs one. He hasn't won since May 15th against the Mets. Well, he is frustrated. He's one of the good guys. He is a perfectionist and uh, takes his craft very seriously. And he is trying to make some changes. He feels like it's some mechanical changes as he strikes out for the second out of the inning. You know, you we see Loesch every fifth day or thereabouts. But I would say more than any other starting pitcher, the work he's doing between starts, just trying to get right, it has to be at some point not only physically exhausting, but mentally exhausting as well because you're, yeah. you're constantly waiting for that next time out. Well, and you're w watching video constantly trying to pick up something he might be doing or did last year they weren't doing this year. Segura right back to the box on the first pitch. That'll be a quick inning for Charlie Morton. Hardly a break for Lowe. She'll be right back on the mound shortly. on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupe and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupe and Abraham, tell them you mean business. 
Two to nothing Pirates. We head to the Pittsburgh third inning. Starling Marte will lead off. He'll be followed by McCutcheon and then Neil Walker. Marte drove in a run on an infield hit in the first inning. He stole a base. He was thrown out at home plate. Beautiful throw by Shane Peterson. Pirates already have five hits in the first two innings. Electric player Starling Marte who looks like he's putting all the pieces together this season. He's hitting home runs driving in runs. Well, it's uh, just a matter of Marte being consistent enough and making contact over the last couple of years but. He certainly has been has figured that out at this point. Never have it completely figure out figured out it's always a constant. Learning process but. Well, he's off to a great start. Hot ground ball Ramirez gloves it and throws him out. Good play by Aramis. One away for Loesch here in the third inning. Well as we saw last night in that Youngman Liriano matchup. These two offenses are uh, very similar in strategy. They they both like to swing early. They like to be aggressive in the count and. Last night's game lasted under two and a half hours as uh, the two pitchers were just cruising right along and we saw a lot of first pitch swings last night and no different here tonight Man, not just good pitching tremendous defense on both sides. That was just a good baseball game last night made even better for the Brewers because they won. Clint Hurdle in his fifth year as the Pirates skipper. On the ground. Segura got a long throw and it skips. Oh, what a play by Adam Lind. Out is the call. I think Nick Leva wants to a review on that. Yeah, Leva had going back and forth with Adam Lind, wondering if he was actually on first base. Had a foot on the bag when he picked it. There, Hurdle's going to step back in the dugout. It's going to be an out. Yeah, Hurdle came out, and the uh, the word came from. The clubhouse that it was out. What a play this was. Segura makes a great play just to have a chance in it out with the speedy McCutcheon running. Tremendous throwing arm. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, pretty close, but Clint Hurdle satisfied that the right call was made on the field. I mean, that's not even close if McCutcheon's at full strength. He's uh, hampered by a balky knee right now. You know, it's one of the trends that we've seen this year, Rock, right? It, the, the managers around baseball if it's a bang bang play and it's early in the game they're not going to challenge. They're not a lot of those calls aren't being overturned and mm -hmm. so. Managers don't want to lose their challenge. Over something you know if you're Clint Hurdle you got a two nothing lead. Well, it's got to be clear and convincing evidence and you know what we saw on that we only saw the one angle on it but. According to the Pirates and Clint Hurdle too close to call. Neil Walker in the air left center shallow coming in para. And a one two three inning for Kyle Loesch. Two to nothing Pittsburgh we're headed to the fourth the Brewers are coming up Jonathan Lucroy will lead off.
and our carsuit.com trivia tonight, which Major League team selected Craig Council in the 1992 MLB draft. And I'll guarantee you this team had no idea that he would become the player that he became in the major leagues. What a terrific career he had. What an MVP of a National League Championship Series. He's got two rings. Played significant roles in both of those World Series titles for the 97 Marlins and then the Arizona Diamondbacks of 01. Luke Croy leads off. Charlie Morton deals strike one. Luke Croy walked in the first. That is the only blemish on Morton's line tonight. He is not allowed to hit through three innings. And Luke Croy, the only base runner. And Luke Croy walked on four consecutive pitches. Having fun at the old ballpark with a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Croy, a little bouncer to first. Alvarez will take it himself. And the first out of the inning. Nine in a row retired by Charlie Morton. And he's retired 10 of 11 to start this game. And that's the thing when he gets that good two seam fastball working he can be very tough. And he's got that curve ball he's got the split change that he throws we haven't seen too many of those yet tonight. Maybe a few more second time through. Braun a strikeout victim his last time up. Morton has four K's. Ryan Braun sitting at the top of the Brewers Club and homers on the Powerball home run leaderboard. He has 13 this season. Adam Lind with nine. Lind homered in Minnesota as well. Had a six RBI game against the Twins. Another defensive swing by Braun. He has not looked good against Charlie Morton. Yeah, the two seam fastball has uh, been effective. When it starts around the knees, you got to let it go, but it's much easier said than done down there in the field. He started about mid thigh. It's going to end up at the knees. That's how much it breaks. Braun is currently seventh in the league in homers. John Carlos Stanton leads the National League and the big leagues with 21. We'll see Bryce Harper in the Nationals tomorrow. Harper has 20. Nationals came back from a 4 2 deficit late in that game against the Yankees. Got two in the eighth to tie it, and they won an 11. You're always encouraging your next opponent to play as many innings as possible. <laughs> and today, the Nationals used five relievers. True Storm got his. 19 save of the season. It's up there among league leaders in that category. Braun, little slow roller back to the mound, and Morton makes the play for out number two. It's not often you see Ryan Braun, you know, take swings like that. That's how good Morton is so far. Hey, see, Platinum selling rock band OAR perform more of their biggest hits in a free post game concert presented by Pick and Save this Saturday. After the Brewers take on the Nationals for tickets, visit Brewers.com slash concerts. Should be a lot of fun. Don't forget that is a 3 o'clock local start for that game. That's a bit of an unusual Saturday start time. That puts the band on stage at 7-12. No, it'll be earlier than that maybe. 6-12. Three-hour game? Just saying. Just my guess. 630. 
20 minutes after the last out. I think is what they do. Yeah. Just roll it all roll in the stage. That's what it was for Joe Nichols. They put the stage right behind second base. Lind hits one hard into left field back is Marte plays deep and he makes a catch and Charlie Morton has four no hit innings only one walk today for Morton it's two to nothing Pirates. And Kyle Loesch back to work. Menards Brewers defense behind Loesch. Here this evening. Yeah, a couple of changes. No Gomez, so that moves Parr into center field. And Shane Peterson has made about as good a contact as anybody in this lineup so far against Charlie Morton. But a nice play by Andrew McCutcheon. Has him hitless. Brewers defense has been very good on this road trip. Jung Ho Gung will lead off for Pittsburgh. Goes hand in hand. Good pitching, good defense. The Gold Glover Gomez out of the lineup tonight. Resting up those legs for the homestand. There's a strike to Gung. Grounded out in the first inning. Pirates got a run in the first. A home run by Alvarez in the second. Los coming off his first three up, three down inning last inning. Needed that one. A lot of finals in from the big leagues today. The Cardinals beat the Rockies in an afternoon affair. Carlos Martinez is now seven and two. And a sub three earned run average with a win today. Pitch well. Rosenthal saved his 20th, mm -hmm. which leads the National League. Cardinals team earned run average at 2.72 coming into play. Pirates are right behind them. But they're over three, 3.02. There's a shot, and it is into right field. That took a tough hop. Gung thinking about two. He's on his way. Braun's throw right on the bag and out at second base. So the Pirates have run into two outs on the base paths. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure. You know, the Pirates like to be aggressive on the bases. You remember Andrew McCutcheon got caught off at of second base, but would have been a fielder's choice anyway. But an out at home plate in the first inning. That's got to be a base hit. That one eats up Gomez. And Ryan Braun getting there quickly, and he's got about as accurate a throwing arm as there is out there in right field. And Gung, easy out at second. So the base running for the Pirates has really been helping Loach tonight. Well, the base running has been aggressive, but not very smart. Yeah, Brewers are making good throws, smart throws, and they've yeah. taken down three on the base pass. Yeah, to lead off an inning, I guess you don't want to be making an out like that, trying to stretch a single into a double. 
Two outs, nobody on, maybe. Well, and especially with Pedro Alvarez, who can hit him as far as anyone. And he launched his 10th of the year back in the second inning. Wave and a miss at a changeup. Low strikes him out. Two outs in the frame. Do whatever you can to avoid fastballs to Alvarez. Keep the ball away from the soft stuff and they have a pretty good chance of getting him out. There's a nice change up going down and away out of the zone. That's a three pitch strikeout for Kyle. Using the Vulcan grip on the change up. It's like a split finger grip except. He splits the middle finger and the ring finger. Ground ball first ball swinging Cervelli it bobbled briefly. No problem. For Hector Gomez and that will retire the side so the Pirates run into an out. Three batter inning for Loesch. We're headed to the fifth. Fifth inning here at PNC Park, last game of this series, and the Brewers make a run of the sweep here. Hey, a reminder that Saturday, Baseball Night in America returns to Fox, an NL Central showdown: Reds, Cubs. Coverage begins Saturday at 6 p.m. Central, and it's only on Fox. Cincinnati will host the All-Star Game this season. Aramis Ramirez leads the way for the Brewers here in the fifth. First ball swinging, fouls it out of play. Reds beat the Phillies today. Phillies are probably already here in Pittsburgh, the next Pirates opponent, the Philadelphia Phillies. Cincinnati had a 5 2 win today over Philly. Cubs have an early lead over the Tigers. Five to nothing. And the Phillies have the lowest winning percentage of any team in baseball. You got one more loss than does the Brewers. Than do the Brewers. Yeah, Brewers are uh, glad to be out of that window. The crew having a nice road trip. Five wins, three losses. Got a chance to go six and three with a win tonight. It's been good pitching. And uh, you think about a rock, you go through St. Louis, a first place team, the Twins, a first place team at the time of the series, and the contending Pirates. Ramirez hits one sharply to center field, a base hit. You can start to feel his bat coming on. That's a first hit of the day for the Brewers. Comes to lead off the fifth, and finally a base runner. The first since the first inning. Yeah, just uh, out of the reach of Neil Walker. Had him play perfectly. Watch well, the way Ramirez pulls the hands in on this sinker. This is one that you would expect Ramirez to try and pull, but boy, he waits back nicely and nice easy swing. It jumps off the bat into center field. 
Walker missed that one by about a foot. Well, Ramirez with a hit last night, driving in two runs. That homer also had a, an RBI on a ground out. Brewers down a pair. Got the tying run to the plate here in the fifth. Gerardo Parra, he lined out his last time up. Little soft liner off the end of the bat. That split change up right mm -hmm. there. Good pitch. Hasn't thrown too many of them. I feel like that pitch is uh, more and more in vogue. The, it's not the, the old fashioned split finger fastball of the fork ball. It's just a little bit of a split grip. That's what Mike Pelfrey was throwing. That is a fastball and that eats alive Gerardo Parra. First out of the inning and strikeout number five for Morton. Change up away, fastball in, and tied him up inside. Good sequence right there. Cervelli goes right to it, sets up on the inside corner, and gets it by Para. It looked like it was off the plate. Here is Hector Gomez now with one away and a man on. Swings and hits it in the air to right. Polanco is there for out number two. Charlie Morton had surgery on his right hip last September. A torn rotator cuff. Not the rotator cuff in the shoulder, but in the hip. Must have been bothering him for a while last year. He was six and twelve a year ago, but had an earned run average under four. Shane Peterson robbed of a hit his last time up. McCutcheon made a beautiful running catch in the left center. Charlie Morton has never been afraid to pitch inside. He hit a league leading 19 hitters last year. Mm. 16 the year before. He's not afraid. And with so much movement. <laughs> tailing in on a right handed batter. Pitching inside. Trying to keep hitters off that outside corner for the curveball. Charlie Morton used to have. Mechanics identical to Roy Halliday. Not so much anymore. He's he's not as hunched over to start his motion any longer. But I remember we'd come in here and we put the split screen up of Roy Halliday and Charlie Morton, and it was exact same. Maybe that's what caused him the hip problems. Who knows? Now Morton. Standing tall now. Remember, yeah. Halliday was always a little bit hunched over and had his his back towards home plate, just kind of spinning back a little bit. He kind of uncoiled, and that electric stuff that Roy Halliday possessed. There's a shot. That's through a base hit. Runner was on the move, and all the way to third base goes Ramirez. Yeah, so Shane Peterson has made good contact tonight against Charlie Morton. Yeah, robbed of an extra base hit his first time up. And check it out. Once again, going to the opposite field, and Morton left that sinker up in the strike zone, just out of the reach of Gung at third. Now, yeah, good base running by Ramirez. He was on the move with the pitch. Ends up at third base with two outs. Well, at the very least, it clears the pitcher spot. Let's see if Loesch can do some damage here. First two hits of the game for the Brewers coming in this fifth inning. Loesch has two hits this year. He's two for 19. And he's down 0 oh and 2.
He's looking for that little jam shot flare in the right field. And it better be a real jam shot because Polanco's not very deep out there in right. On the ground, coming across is Gung, and he makes a play to end the inning. The Brewers threaten, they get two on, they finally get their first hit. Still 2 nothing, however. In Casino, the crew trailing two to nothing here in the fifth at PNC. And if you are a biking enthusiast, you will love joining the Brewers Community Foundation for the inaugural benefit bike ride scheduled for August 8th. The ride includes four routes, 22 and 44 mile routes, starting and ending at Miller Park, and also 88 and 100 mile routes from Madison to Miller Park. You can pedal to benefit four nonprofit organizations in town, including the Urban Ecology Center, Dream Bikes, Penfield Children's Center, and the Miracle League of Milwaukee. You can spend a fun day on the bike, followed by a tailgate party, and ticket to that night's Brewers against the Cardinals game. Craig Council talking about the road trip. The crew has gone five and three, and he said a big part of that has been the starting rotation, carrying an earned run average just under three on this trip, and also the defense. He said the defense in particular, Gene Segura has been outstanding, Carlos Gomez as well, Gerardo Parra. He said it really has helped the pitchers out by limiting their pitches, helping them get out of jams, and he said the two are certainly related and go hand in hand, and he also pointed out that with the starters, going deep into games it's helped to minimize the absence of Will Smith he's finishing up his six game suspension here tonight. All right Sophia thanks you have Taylor Youngman went seven last night Jimmy Nelson seven uh, the game before six the game before and you're starting to get some length out of them you're starting to get some rest and regular roles for your bullpen members and uh, the bullpen has been such a story here they have only allowed two earned runs this entire road trip. Through the first eight games, it's over 39 innings of work. There's a shot back up the middle, base hit. Jordy Mercer starts the bottom of the fifth with a clean single. He's two for two today. Yeah, it is impressive what the bullpen has been able to do. I mean, they've been pretty good all season long. I mean, the guys that are here right now have been throwing the baseball pretty well, but when you get good starting pitching, you don't use your early inning relievers all that much, and typically, well, those are the guys going to get hit once in a while. You get Broxton, you get Jeffress, K Rod, you know, guys like that. Will Smith, Cotts has been throwing the baseball well. So when you get into your winning scenario, that's when you're going to have good numbers out of your bullpen. Charlie Morton, the pitcher, is up there to bunt. Michael Blazik's been a nice story for the Brewers this year. Yeah, Big sure surprise. Has. He started out as a long man, very rarely getting in, and now he's getting some important innings. And the Brewers have used three different starting pitchers to cover that hole due to the Willie Peralta injury, an oblique injury. Tyler Wagner, Tyler Cravey, 
And then Taylor Youngman. In last night's game and Youngman's going to get the start Sunday so really for the first time since Peralta went on the DL. You'll have a, a starter making a second start in that spot. Morton gets a bunt down that is foul. And that will be a strikeout for Los. It's just his second K of the game. First out of the inning. Mercer has to stay put at first and back to the top of the order. The Brewers have won four of their last five games. And they have won back to back series for the first time this year. You know what Taylor Youngman did last night hasn't been done very often in Brewers franchise history which began in 1969 he became just the third pitcher in franchise history to throw at least seven innings allow three hits or fewer and earn the win in his major league debut. That's a combo that is fairly rare for major league debuts. Matter of fact you got to go back to. Steve Woodard the last time it was done a pitcher to go at least seven and get a win. Woodard's debut was something special. You were there for that Rod. Yeah, I was there. Blue Jays. And I, uh, I caught Ricky Keaton as well down in the minor leagues. Line drive to left Peterson makes a play. Correct me if I'm wrong but was it Woodard's start against Roger Clemens. Yep, the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. I think Woodard gave up a hit his first batter. And didn't give up much after that. But yeah, surprise, surprising what Taylor Young one is able to. Who saw that coming, right? But an earned run average as high as it was down in the minor leagues. Much different conditions here than in Colorado Springs. Craig Council was talking last night about Youngman, and uh, something that we were talking about on the air as well. But you know, Youngman is. He's been in the fire in some big games. He played at a major college scene at the University of Texas and uh, they, in in scout speak they call them show ponies players who perform better in the major leagues than they did in the minor leagues and a lot of pressure on a first rounder when you're in the minor leagues you're expected to move quickly through the minor leagues and it hasn't gone quickly for Youngman so I'm sure just getting here was a major relief for him. Yeah, one of the big issues that he had down in the minor leagues was walks. And not he didn't walk guys every start, but when he would walk hitters, they would come in bunches. And that's what would be his undoing. He didn't give up many homers. He gave up two home runs down in the minor leagues. Little jam shot. Segura shovels to Gomez and Kyle Loesch has settled in here in Pittsburgh. Two early runs. Pirates lead it. Brewers are coming up. Park 
Celebrate Go Go's 2014 All Star season with the Carlos Gomez All Star bobblehead given to all fans at Miller Park. Courtesy of Pepsi, this Sunday as the Brewers close out their series against the Washington Nationals. Go to Brewers.com to reserve your spot at the ballpark today. Four game series with the Washington Nationals. Gene Segura leads off for the Brewers here in the sixth. Yeah, Gomez. He loves that bobblehead. It's got his all star uni on. His son loves it even more. He's got a whole stack of them. How cool would that be, right? To have a to have a bobblehead doll of your dad. Yeah. Gomez kids probably think every dad gets a bobblehead, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> All of his buddies, guys with the with the team get him. Segura beats one into the ground. Jordy Mercer unloads it quickly, and Segura is retired. Well, one away. The ground balls keep coming for Charlie Morton. Here comes Jonathan Lucroy with one out. He's in our T-Mobile game changer. Lucroy since. June 2nd, seven games since coming back from that broken toe. He's 11 for 31. He has a home run. Hit that home run in Minnesota. A couple of RBIs. That includes a one for in this series. So that's how well he was swinging the bat before he got to Pittsburgh. Luke Roy to be followed by Braun. The Brewers trying to get something going offensively. Just collected their first hit of the game last inning. Aramis Ramirez had a single. Two hits in the fifth inning. The Brewers stranded him at first and third. Shane Peterson had the other single. Charlie Morton's been stingy on the Brew Crew tonight. On the ground to short. Mercer again back to back 6 3 ground outs. So two gone. And we got a developing story here. No Ryan Braun. Aaron Perez is going to mm -hmm. bat yeah. for the Brewers. So that's not a good sign. No. I'm trying to figure out uh, what happened. And you know, the, the only thing I can. Remember Braun doing was uh, making that throw. He, he ran into the gap in right center and threw out Gung at second. Well, he's had two real poor at bats against Morton. Morton's been tough on Braun. He's uh, forced some really awkward swings tonight. Didn't look like himself. Ground ball, third base. So no Gomez, no Braun. Three up, three down. Brewers down two to nothing. To the bottom of the six we go.
Ryan Braun is out of the game. Sophia is down there and hoping to give us a report as soon as one becomes available to her. Two to nothing Pirates. Gerardo Parra will remain in center field. Shane Peterson in right field. And Hector Gomez will have to play left. Not something he's done a whole lot of. Hernan Perez will stay in the game to play second base. Andrew McCutcheon leads off. 2 nothing Pittsburgh and a liner in the left center. McCutcheon with a base hit to start the sixth inning. Hey, remember Braun's last at bat when he bounced back to the pitch that we were talking about. You haven't, we don't see too many at bats from Ryan Braun like we've seen in his first two at bats today. I see something going on with him. That's why he was swinging like that. And be interesting to see what it is. You hope it's not the thumb again. Now, what it means is. Is that Hector Gomez for the first time in his major league career will play the outfield. Never done it. At the big league level. And obviously Craig Council wants to give Gomez a complete day off. So that would have been an easy move to put Carlos. Into the game and you certainly don't. Lose anything there but which means it's not just a day off. Neil Walker at the plate. As a matter of fact, just looking at Hector Gomez's uh, player record from the minor leagues, never played in the outfield in the minor leagues either. So this is the first time he has ever been in a game in the outfield. And he's doing it at the major league level and now. And he is hoping that he gets one early, an easy one. Can of corn out the left. He looked good in BP. He's been yeah. working out out there, but a little bit different. Now there was one day when Ryan Braun left to go back to Los Angeles to have his thumb worked on. There was a day the Brewers didn't have an extra outfielder. Peterson hadn't arrived yet, and Hector Gomez was going to be that guy. And he spent the entire batting practice session with Gerardo Parra. And Para took him under his wing, was going through all the nuances of playing the outfield. And Para's good that way. Outfield looks a little bit different than it did on opening day, doesn't it? Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Instead of Davis, Carlos Gomez, and Braun, you've got Hector Gomez, Para, and Shane Peterson. As soon as we get an update from the clubhouse on Braun, we will pass it along. Waiting to hear why he left the game. No announcement yet. Three balls and a strike on Neil Walker. Missed outside ball four. And it's first and second with nobody out in the sixth inning. Yeah, just trying to catch that corner, realizing that he can't get too much of the plate, just misses it. Then a good eye by Walker. Two on, nobody out for Jung Ho Gung now. And not only Gomez, is Gomez making his outfield debut, it's probably the biggest left field in all of baseball. Horace Field might be close. He's got the speed. Gung in the left, a base hit. McCutcheon got a late start. They'll hold him up. And he's got the arm. Good throw by Hector out in left field. Got away from Luke Croy briefly. Los was there to back it up. The bases are now loaded with nobody out. Great Council says that he's probably got the best arm on the team. I mean, Maldonado pretty close. It'd be a pretty good contest as far as throwing arms go. And Rick Sofield, the third base coach, got the guy thrown out in the first inning, not about to take another chance. Kyle Los there to back up the play. 
check in with Sophia. She's got an update on Ryan Braun. Yeah, word from the Brewers clubhouse that Braun left the game with dizziness. So uh, we'll check in with him after the game and see how Braun is doing. But again, dizziness causing Ryan Braun to leave the game. All right, thanks, Sophia. Here's Alvarez now. Big swing and a miss and a changeup. Now this is a key moment in the game here. Another swing and a miss. Another changeup by Loesch, and the count is 0-2 on Alvarez. Yeah, doubt that Alvarez is going to get another fastball in the strike zone. Got him on a changeup his last time up. Loesch could use a strikeout. The Brewers do have an interesting shift on here for Alvarez it's what you would see with nobody on the bases are loaded you got three infielders on the right side makes for an awkward double play Brewers will be happy to turn two and concede the run in the air popped him up Perez Makes the catch in fair territory. Makes it an infield fly rule. Now gets a double play. One away in the inning. Right, what a break there. I mean, uh, Alvarez way out in front of a changeup again. It's been all changeups for strikes for Alvarez in his last couple of at bats since he hit one completely out of the ballpark his first time up. One away, bases loaded. Francisco Cervelli at the plate. Had him reaching a little bit. Cervelli's been the Pirates' best hitter recently. Matter of fact, in his last 20 games started, he's hitting 440. And, and a huge makes, month of May. And he makes very good contact. Difficult to strike him out. He's grounded into only two double plays so far. Loesch would love to get another one from him here. One man out. Bases full of Pirates. Inning started with a single by McCutcheon. Neil Walker walked, and then Gung had a base hit. Los just got Alvarez to pop up. Two balls and a strike. Two to nothing, Pittsburgh. You're just picking us up. Ryan Braun just left the game with dizziness. Carlos Gomez not in the lineup here tonight. The 2 1 in there for a strike. 2 yeah. and 2. I think he fooled him. Yeah, cut fastball right down the middle of the plate. I'll try that pitch again, but this time get it down and away. There's the pitch he wants to get it done on. 2 and 2. Don't want to get 3 and 2. Be forced to throw a strike. Nowhere to put him with the bases full. On the ground, chance to turn it. Segura, Perez, and it is a double play. Loesch gets out of it. Bases loaded, nobody out. A pop up and a double play, and it's still two to nothing.
defense getting a big play early in this game. Sending Marte and this throw from Shane Peterson. Helped to Los get out of what would look like maybe a big inning. Segura with a beautiful play. And how about Lind on the other end of that? Ryan Braun has an outfield assist tonight. Cut down Gung. And then this one, Rock, this may be the biggest of them all. A 6-4-3 double play to get out of a bases loaded mess. And yeah, one of the hottest hitters that the Pirates have had as of late. And uh, got him on a cut fastball. Savelli tried to pull it. And Kyle Loesch able to keep the Pirates off the board. Bases loaded, nobody out, and it's still a two to nothing game. Sean Rodriguez will take over at first base for the Pirates. Alvarez is out. Charlie Morton is rolling along here. We start the seventh inning. Morton has allowed just two hits, working on a two hit shutout. Both of those hits came in the fifth inning. Ramirez and Shane Peterson. And nothing since that time. Matter of fact, the Brewers have had just three base runners tonight. Lucroy drew a walk in the first inning. Four no hit innings for Morton. That fifth inning, that 18 pitch inning, Brewers stranded two. But he has been very efficient in this game here tonight as he works in the seventh. Bottom half of the order able to get on base, but it was the pitcher that made the last out of the inning, Kyle Lowe's. And two innings with pitch counts under 10 for Morton tonight. That'll keep you in the game a while. And he loses Lind. So he walks him on five pitches, just the second walk of the day for Charlie Morton. And it's a lead base runner for the Brewers with Ramirez coming up. He's the tying run at the plate presented by Wendy's. Aramis grounded out in the second, had a single sharply hit to center field in the fifth inning. I guess you're a little worried about fatigue if you're the Pirates with Charlie Morton. Coming back from the disabled list. It's just his fourth start since returning from the DL. Hurdle will keep a close eye on him. Nobody warming up in the Pirates bullpen for now. Hasn't gone over 90 pitches in any start so far. Ramirez turns it around foul. But his first two starts he went seven innings. So very efficient in his first two starts. Last start 82 pitches. Against the Braves in a win. Only five innings. His former team, the Braves. Ball and a strike on Aramis. That's in there. Strike two. Popped him up. Rodriguez drifting into foul territory. Out number one for Charlie Morton. Ramirez is one for three. Take you back to our carsoup.com trivia question. Craig counsels the subject, which Major League team selected him in the 1992 MLB draft. The Colorado Rockies. He was an 11th rounder out of Notre Dame. Gerardo Parra takes the ball down it in. Draft is all wrapped up, Rock. That's a lot of work. Yeah. All the scouts, we uh, tip our hat to all of the Brewers' amateur scouts scouring the land for baseball talent. The war room can finally be cleaned up. On the ground. Got a chance to turn it here. It goes 4 6 3. Harada Parra bounces into two. And the inning is over. Pirates looking to go 4 and 0 in Morton's starts this season.
Pennsylvania, Allegheny River. Hey, tonight's time of the game winner, Kills Bar and Grill in Glenwood City. They call the Brewers in the next 24 hours. They get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. This off courtesy of the Tavern League, Wisconsin. And Miller Lite. Here we go to the bottom of the seventh inning from PNC Park. Jordy Mercer leads off. First pitch strike from Loesch. Loesch is hanging tough. He was able to get out of a mess last inning. Bases loaded, nobody out. Loesch got a pop up and a double play ball. And he carries on. He was probably a batter away from being removed from the game. And for a starting pitcher who is trailing in a game like this, you want to hang in there as long as you can. Hope your offense gives you some runs, have a chance at a victory. Yeah, base hit by Cervelli, he'd have been gone probably. Pitch count at 90. Just around the same spot that Charlie Morton's at. Two balls and a strike on Mercer. Got a couple of hits tonight. Little half swing. Didn't mean to do it. And it's two and two. Now the first inning was a troublesome inning for Lowe. She gave up hits to the first three batters. But the Pirates in that inning had a runner thrown out at the plate. Marte. Great throw from Peterson. Yeah, 40 pitches in the first two innings. On three occasions tonight, the Pirates have had outs on the base pads. And that one is going to sneak through for a base hit. Jordy Mercer is three for three tonight. That didn't hit it hard. The range for Aramis Ramirez is not that great these days, but normally if he can get to it, he's going to be able to make the play, but not able to get far enough in the hole and sneaks it into left field as Mercer tried to pull a slider cutter up in the strike zone and got a base hit and therein lies the difficulty with Loesch he's been leaving a lot of those pitches up gives Morton a chance to bunt once again he's got a sacrifice tonight also has a strikeout trying to bunt Pirates up two to nothing. Scored a run in the first, a run in the second. There's a good bunt. Low shall barehand it and out number one. Sacrifice for Charlie Morton. A couple of sack bunts for him tonight. And a runner at second now with one away. Top of the order coming. Here is Gregory Polanco. And I think that might do it for Loesch. Here comes Greg Council. And Council makes a call to the pin. He wants to play matchup here with Polanco, the left-handed hitter, coming up. So Council will take the ball from Loesch. He cannot win tonight. Open his offense can take him off the hook. Two runs allowed. Still a runner. His responsibility at second base. We'll take a break. Neil Cott coming in for the Brew Crew.
Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Well, if the Brewers are going to sweep the Pirates, they're going to have to come back to do it. Kyle Loesch is out, surrendering 10 hits and six and a third. And two runs could have been a whole lot worse. He really minimized the damage in a couple of those innings. So, Rock, it'll be Neil Kotz now as Council will play matchup with the left-hander Polanco coming up. Yeah, Kotz has uh, been very good. He's been unscored upon in each of his last seven appearances. This could very be one and out because you've got activity in the bullpen, a right-hander down there. And a couple of tough right handers coming up behind Polanco. Council does have activity in his bullpen. Polanco doubled and scored in the first inning. Marte drove him in. Pedro Alvarez homered in the second. Those are the two tallies for the Pirates. Michael Blazik. In the Brewer bullpen. Under the watchful eye of Lee Tunnel. And Kotz last pitched on Sunday against the Minnesota Twins, a scoreless inning. Swing and a foul tip right into the middle. Lucroy. It's one and two now. Location of the breaking pitches has been much better for Kotz, although he left that one up. Much better against right handers. That is the case with most lefties. Not all, but most. And most managers would prefer a lefty lefty matchup when it's available. The one two is a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Yep, that's what we're talking about location. I would imagine Craig Council is going to come out again. And here he comes. Well, they get ahead in the count as a one two pitch, and Cotts put the slider right where he wanted to. Down and away out of the zone and Polanco waves at it. So Kotz does his job. He gets the left hander out. Two outs in the inning with a runner at second. And back to the bullpen the Brewers go. Second out of the inning. Two to nothing Pirates. Well, don't forget Fox Sports Live coming your way tonight on Fox Sports 1. All the highlights from across baseball. A busy day in New York. Bryce Harper facing the Yankees. Matt Harvey on the mound for the Mets. Got a full breakdown of game four in the Stanley Cup as well. All that and more on Fox Sports Live tonight. Fox Sports 1 or simulcast right here. On Fox Sports Wisconsin. And Michael Blazer gone for the 24th time. Outstanding numbers for the young right hander. A 116 earned run average for Blazik. He pitched on Sunday as well, an inning and two thirds. Scoreless baseball. Has not allowed a run in each of his last six outings. He's got a man at second and two outs. Say those opponent batting average 
jump off the page at you. No matter right handed or left first ball swinging Marte into the bat. Deep center it goes Para is there and Blazik throws one pitch. And the Brewers strand another runner in scoring position. Two nothing Pirates we head to the eighth. Delivery of the game, and at this point, it has to go to Charlie Morton, who has been terrific for the Pirates through the first seven innings. Rock, he's working on a two hit shutout. And both of the hits came in the same inning. That was uh, back in the fifth inning for the Brewers. The bottom of the order able to get it done, but uh, you knew he was going to get a lot of ground ball outs, which he's been able to do. Five strikeouts for Morton, and only six fly ball outs through seven innings. Two to nothing Pirates as Hector Gomez leads off. When he's right, he gets those ground balls, and that's why he's earned the nickname Ground Chuck. Charlie Morton. I thought that was Chuck Knoll. Isn't that Chuck Knoll? They called him Ground Chuck. Steelers coach. For the ground game. Franco Harris. So. I think that's what it was. Well, Rocky Blyer. I'm not up on my Pittsburgh Steelers uh, football say, knowledge. Say yes, yeah. It's, it's I do remember Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris. <laughs> you can't steal a nickname. Terry Bradshaw. Come on, that nickname's taken in Pittsburgh. L.C. Greenwood, Mean Joe Green. Okay. Yeah, he's he's either here to see Ground Chuck. There's a swing and a miss. Hector Gomez he is out on strikes. I disagree. I think he can steal a nickname. As a matter of fact, the Pittsburgh television analyst also has the nickname Rock. So there are two rocks in the press box. But not in the same city. You know, the other thing you can't do, you can't name yourself. You can't give yourself a nickname no, either. No, no. I feel like that's a that's a fan nickname that's been uh, you know reborn. That's a beautiful football stadium they have just uh, next door. Great area here in Pittsburgh. They were out tailgating by the thousands earlier today. They got a nice crowd here tonight. Brewers trying to send them home sad. They're going to have to come back to do it. It was actually Chuck Knox, actually. I'm sorry. Oh, well, then it, then it totally works. Yeah, it does work. I apologize. Did that information just come to you? or no, I, I looked it up. Never mind. Peterson draws a walk. Well, there's a start. It's a one out walk. The third walk issued by Morton. And here comes Jason Rogers to pinch hit. Yeah, Summerfest is just a few short weeks away. And once again, the Brewers have teamed up with Summerfest to bring you the Rock the Ballpark ticket package that includes a Brewers ticket and a general admission ticket to Summerfest. 
Offer just 22 bucks for details. Go to brewers.com slash Summerfest. Yeah, Chuck Noll was the emperor. Chuck Knox was the coach of the Rams. Brown Chuck. I knew it was a football coach. So as far as the nickname parameters goes, you're good with what I'm Charlie okay Warren's with it got. then. Okay. Not the same city. Rams, Seahawks, and Bills. <laughs> There's a strike to Jason Rogers. Rogers has been great off the bench this year for the Brew Crew. It's been the best pinch hitter that Council has had. He's been used the most as well. He's hitting over 300 in a pinch hit roll. Hit a home run last night. Long ball here ties it up. Three eighteen batting average. He's seven or eighteen at the plate. Oh, got a hanger. Let it go by. Had a nice chat with uh, Darnell Coles about. Jason Rogers, he says he's very relaxed up there at the plate. He's very prepared. He watches the pitchers as they go through the batting order. And he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. He'll sit up there, wait for a pitch, and doesn't mind hitting with two strikes. Well, here he is at one and two. Got a runner at first with one away. And that one misses inside, not by much. Yeah, look at the right on the edge on Fox tracks. Pirates do have activity in their bullpen. Pitch number 100 from Morton. What's impressive about Rogers is the fact that he's doing this basically in his first full season in the big leagues. Most young hitters who come up can't succeed in this role. This was his home run last night. He got down and in slider. Knocked it into the first row of the bleachers in left field. Had an RBI single in the seventh last night. Zarnell Coles was also saying how relaxed he's able to stay, even in the big spots in a game like tonight. Takes the same approach that he has in batting practice and is able to use that in a game. That's difficult for a young player to do sometimes. Darnell Coles was his manager at the double A level before Darnell went to the Tigers. Working as the assistant hitting coach there. Darnell returning this year as the hitting coach for the Brewers. There's a swing and a liner into left field. That is down. A base hit. Jason Rogers does it again. A pinch hit, two strike single. And the Brewers now with two on, one away in the top of the order coming up. So talking about Charlie Morton tried to bust him inside. And after a steady diet of off speed pitches, got ahead of him. And it was another curveballs, fastballs off the plate, finally able to bust him inside, and you see Rogers able to pull the hands in and dump it in the left. Nice at bat again for Jason Rogers. He's having a great year. They're going to take the ball from Charlie Morton. He will exit to a standing ovation. The Brewers have finally chased the starter. It's the eighth inning.
that's a that's a tight squeeze. That barge going under the Roberto Clemente Bridge. That's about as far down as that crane will go, too. Ooh. That's Big Al out there. That's a rally barge is what that is on the Allegheny River. Jason Rogers now leads all pinch hitters in the National League as eight pinch hits. And he just delivered with two strikes, forcing a pitching change for Clint Hurdle. The hard throwing Tony Watson is coming in. Yep, the setup man. You got Mark Melanson, the closer out there in the bullpen. 30th appearance for the hard throwing left hander out of that Pirates pen. Gene Segura at the plate, two on. Tying run at first. Segura representing the go ahead run. Segura tonight is 0 for 3. Was 2 for 4 last night. Had his 10 game hit streak snapped here on Monday. There's a bouncer up the middle. Got a chance for 2. And that's it. 6 3 double play just like that. The rally is snuffed out by the left hander Watson. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Good player. Bon Joshua. I don't like it, Jeff. Doesn't fit. Doesn't look anything like I like bon Gracie. Joshua. I just call him Gracie. Yeah. That's better. Say goodnight, Gracie. At least he didn't name himself. <laughs> we are headed to the Pittsburgh half of the eighth inning. And we got Corey Knabel on the mound for the Brew Crew. Because you can't have enough former Georgetown Eagles on the mound. Youngman last night, now Knabel. His first appearance in this series. Man, he's been good as well. I mean, part of this uh, very good Brewers bullpen is they can continue here. Third out of the pen tonight. Right, can able last pitch on Sunday. Tossed a scoreless inning in Minnesota. Facing Andrew McCutcheon to start the inning. Brewers had two on and one out. A double play off the bat of Segura to end the inning. Closes the book on Charlie Morton. Pitching about as well now as he has in his career here in Pittsburgh, coming back strong from surgery, hip surgery. Seven and a third for Morton, three hits, and three walks, and six strikeouts. Pirates don't give up many games when they lead after seven. They've got an excellent bullpen. They are 30 and one this year when they lead after seven innings. Their lone loss came against the Cubs. 
Melanson had a blown save. That was back in April. And the Brewers figure to face Melanson next. There's a swing and a miss, put a fastball by him. And you don't see that very often. That was a 3 1 fastball up in the strike zone, and Andrew McCutcheon, he can hit anybody's fastball, turns those things around regularly. Brewers able to get through the seventh inning. Loesch started the inning. And a man at second base as Knable issues a walk. Neil Cott's got a strikeout, and then on one pitch, Blazik. Now they fly ball to center. So Council keeps those two relievers fresh and ready for tomorrow's opener against the Nationals. Knable trying to keep the Pirates at two to give the Brewers a chance in the ninth inning. Here's Neil Walker. By the way, Neil Cotts now has eight consecutive scoreless outings for the Brewers. He's really turned things around. It's all about location. Not leaving a slider up in the strike zone. A lot of the home runs he gave up early in the season. Talking about Cotts with sliders up. Belt high sliders. Hasn't been doing that. All right now Kyle Loesch is on the hook for the loss. Six and a third tonight for Loesch giving up two runs. Pitch better tonight but. The Brewers offense. Not there. At least yet. They've got three more outs. To work with they got the good part of the order coming up. Luke Roy will lead off. In the ninth inning. You're just picking us up. Ryan Braun left this game with dizziness. And Carlos Gomez is not in the lineup tonight and not expected to play tonight as Craig Council wants to give his weary legs a day off. Hector Gomez is in left field. Started the game at second base. Yeah, it doesn't make it any easier to come back, does it, when you have Gomez and Braun not in the batting order? Brewers will have Lucroy leading off, then Perez, and then Adam Lynn. If anybody gets on, Aramis Ramirez would bat. So you got the part of the order that can do some damage. Hadn't been a whole lot of damage done tonight, however. The Brewers have just three hits. Canable deals a one two a strike call. He got it in there, a fastball. Yeah, right at the bottom of the strike zone. Now Walker didn't like the call. So Walker hitless. Right at the bottom of the zone on the corner. Good pitch. There's Jung Ho Gung now with one away. Oh, a power fastball and a power swing. Gung has two hits tonight, two out of three. Clint Hurdle's got a little situation brewing here with Gung and Josh Harrison. And who's going to get the lion's share of playing time at third base? Gung's in his rookie year, but. Very established player in Korea. A star over there. Hit 40 homers last year. Harrison just signed a big contract. A deal that will run through the 2018 season. And Harrison was an all-star last season. But yeah. he is not swinging the bat well. Yeah, he got knocked out of the leadoff spot. Good problem to have. Having too many guys on your bench that deserve playing time. Seen a lot of zeros on this road trip. It started with a one nothing win for the Brewers against St. Louis. 
Cardinals return to favor the next night, beating the Brewers one to nothing. There have been four shutouts. The Brewers got shut out two to nothing in the final game against the Twins, and then they won the opener here on a rainy Monday night, two to nothing. That ball is lined in the left. Gung with his third hit of the night. Oh, there's some quick hands on a pitch up and in right there. Wow. That bat got through the zone quickly on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Check this out. He's got two strikes on him, and they would have turned that baby around. You don't see that very often with a fastball at that velocity. They would go on top of it and hit it hard in the left. Yeah, that's the impressive thing, right? To be able to hit the top of the baseball up there with two strikes at that speed. Yeah. So two on, one away. Can able can ill afford to give up any more runs here. Sean Rodriguez batting for the first time. McCutcheon walked to start the inning. Rodriguez came in for Pedro Alvarez defensively. We uh, don't have a report from the Pirates clubhouse. Not sure if that was manager's decision or if that was uh, an illness or injury. Maybe it's just a defensive move. Alvarez with eight errors at first base. That's a lot. One ball one strike two on for the Pirates bottom of the eighth on the ground got a chance to turn it Segura Perez and again a double play for the Brewers six four three it goes let's see if that'll get the bats rattled we're headed to the ninth last call for the Brew crew Jonathan Lucroy all star catcher he'll lead off when we come back Brewers down two nothing. By Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. Under the lights on a Wednesday night, the Brewers running out of outs. Down to their last three. We head to the ninth inning. Two nothing Pirates. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. Pittsburgh got a run on this infield hit by Marte in the first inning, and then Pedro Alvarez hit a 438-foot homer over the back wall in right field, and at this point that's all that Charlie Morton needed he was fantastic today seven and a third for Morton Rocky gives up just three hits does not allow a run and looking to go to four and oh in his first four starts as Mark Melanson comes on 18 out of 19 in save opportunities for Melanson he posted save number nine 
They, he's posted a save in nine straight outings in 10 of 11. And he has been on a roll as of late. He has not given up a whole lot in his last 21 games. Dating back to the end of April. He was a ninth rounder. In the 06 draft out of the University of Arizona. Yankees drafted him. Made it to the big leagues with the Yankees and then uh, started to bounce around a little bit. He was with Houston. Never saved a game. Until his. Third year in the big leagues and uh, I don't think anybody who saw him coming up. Imagine that he'd be this kind of closer. He had 33 saves last year and. Pirates haven't lost a beat. Melanson taking over for Jason Grilly. Yeah, he's got a good cut fast but he throws a lot of them. Luke Roy starts it for the Brewers. Erdon Perez to follow. Quickly 0 and 2 on Luke. Who is 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. There's that cutter right off the end of the bat. That's a tough pitch. Luke Croy's out number one. Well, the Brewers are finally returning home. Can't wait. Miller Light, what's on tap? Tanner Roark, Matt Garza tomorrow. Ryan Zimmerman, the Wisconsin native. Or Jordan Zimmerman, I beg your pardon, against Mike Fires. And then you got Ross and Nelson on Saturday. Scherzer, Youngman, Sunday. Taylor Youngman getting his second start. He was so impressive last night. He earned a continued stay in the big leagues. Here's Hernan Perez. He takes a strike. At the OAR concert Saturday. That's a three o'clock start time. And the concert immediately following the game. It's going to be a fun weekend yeah. at Miller Park. It's going to be good to get home, isn't it? School is going to be out for just about everybody in Wisconsin. They all wrap it up this week, Thursday and Friday. Melanson deals a 1 1. Slow roller. This is Gung. Two outs. <laughs> You try and pull that cutter you're in bad shape the issue that you have is you can't pick it up. You know he's going to throw it but it breaks so late. It's got a short break to it not a big break. And an effective pitch. Uh, certainly. Had a good chance to uh, develop that pitch. With the Yankees coming up with the Yankees. And Mariano Rivera, he spent a lot of time in that bullpen with Rivera and in spring training. He's making a name for himself, though. He was an all star two years ago. Melanson has Adam Lind standing in his way. Two outs, first ball swinging. This is easy as it gets. The Brewers go quietly in the ninth. Three up, three down. Melanson. Picks up his 19th save. The Pirates win. They salvage the final game of this three game series. A seven pitch ninth inning for Melanson. Now the Brewers get shut out again. They're the third time they've been shut out on this road trip. They had two shutouts and they finished the road trip with a five and four record, taking two out of three here in Pittsburgh. Time now for Brewers Live. We check in with Jeff Grayson. He's standing by in our Fox Sports Wisconsin studio. Jeff.